Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And the Springboks have done it. They have won their first game in Cardiff against Wales since 2012. They left it late, but a try by Malcolm Marks and then a penalty by Alton Yankees past the Hooter once again has given the box a 23 points to 18 victory against the Wales in what was a pretty traditional European wet arm wrestle of a test match which might not make the books in terms of the most exciting flair driven sort of match but one that was really down to the wire two world-class sides going toe-to-toe not being able to break each other down the finest of margins some major referee calls some big performances from some players some poor performances from others it was a test match that did kind of have it all despite it not having much at the same time which which sounds strange but i think if you watched it you'll probably agree a um, bit of a strange test match um, because, I mean, for a game that was that was so wet, only had one scrum in the entire first half. And it was interesting that the more the set piece started coming into the game, the more set pieces that the Springboks started getting, the more they started to dominate and really use that, that sort of set piece weapon. And it is their strongest point. So... Um, but it was a very interesting match to watch. Before we sort of break it down, please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And I'm trying to find just just you know, getting all the stats and stuff like I haven't talked about it. But it was a game where I mean, off the off the get go, I thought the Springboks started pretty well. I mean, sorry, the Welsh well started pretty well, um, and then a couple of vital turnovers from the box sort of allowed them to sort of be able to get into Welsh territory um, and and sort of impose themselves. But a big turning point in the game. Look, it was one of those games where it kind of went. Three points versus three points. And Wales would get a penalty and then they would concede a penalty quite early after kickoff. The restarts continue to be a bit of an issue for South Africa. A couple of times, Wales going down the middle and us not being able to really deal with it well. Um, So something we do need to work on. Um, But at the end of the day, you know, I think the biggest reason that the South Africa couldn't get into the side and couldn't get into the game in the first half was almost a lack of set piece, a lack of being able to use the world-class forwards that we do have. So... It was quite important, I suppose, to just sort of stay patient and continue to sort of keep working, being able to get these set pieces, being able to put ourselves in a position where we can sort of really have a go at Wales. So half-time score, everything was very much in the balance. Um, an early replacement for um, South Africa, as Damien Willemse was replaced after just about 10 minutes. Um, and ironically, his replacement, Francois Stein, going on to be named man of the match in the game. So a very big performance from him. But if you look at some of the stats and sort of the breakdown of the points, I mean, it really was. So it was 3-0 at at, at 10 minutes, two minutes later, um, 3-3 with Andre Pollard, then 6-3 to Dan Digger, then 6-6, then 9-6, then 12-6, a bit of a six-point lead. In the 40th minute, 12-9 at halftime. Immediately after halftime, Dan Digger going once again up to six points, and then Pollard cutting down the deficit. Once again, well, France was staying with a very fantastic 55-meter effort down to 12-5, sorry, 15-12, then to 15-15. Um, and stayed 15 for a while. And the 65th minute, Dan Bigger going up to 18 points to 15. Then Marcus Oma Pimpy actually went over the try line and had it disallowed because of um, Springbok players straying offside, not retreating from the kickoff. Um, I mean, from the kick ahead from Cables Reynolds, which went straight ahead. Uh, probably was quite rightly chalked off. Um, and I kind of sort of felt maybe that was the big moment missed. However, um, winning a penalty to the Springboks through a scrum, uh, inevitably the scrum did become a massive weapon for us. Um, Francois Stein initially kicking us quite close. Another penalty, Alton Yankees kicking us into the five meters. And then a massive more. The, the more that we've been waiting for the entire game came in the 73rd minute when Malcolm Marks crashed over. Um, Alton Yankees missing the conversion. A bit of a strange decision to have him take it, given the fact that it was on the far left and you had a right footed option in France staying. Um, the Springboks are electing not to take a penalty, uh, take points a couple minutes later when they could have, going for the line, um, then conceding a penalty. The Wales couldn't really kick themselves out of danger. They got themselves out to about the 10 meter. Some fantastic defense by the Springboks, sort of kept them in the air. Then a massive turnover from Quaker Smith. Um, eventually winning a penalty for the Springboks, who then kicked it over. Um, I think the Springboks got a little bit lucky with the crowd, actually. A spectator coming out into the crowd and uh, kind of putting Liam Williams off, and I think he probably could have scored a try. So a pretty unfortunate moment in the game, which which shouldn't have even existed in the first place. But if we look at some of the stats from the game itself, 42% possession for Wales, 58 from the Springboks. And that all came down to the second half, where Springboks had 65% of the possession. They also had 71% territory in the second half. Six penalties apiece that were taken. One try was the big separator. Um, South Africa actually ran 281 meters to Wales, 136. South Africa beat 17 defenders to Wales, 12, three clean breaks, more gain line carries, fewer passes, 
more turnovers. One, I thought Quaker Smith was having a field day at, at the breakdown, and a couple of turnovers from Trevor Nukani as well. Kicks from hand, 32 to 28, it's a pretty even. A lot of kicking as you'd expect in the condition. Um, the rucks were pretty solid. Defensively, Wales missed 70 tackles. Springboks missed 12. Uh, Springboks operating at 89% success rate. Just the one kick missed from the Springboks. That was the conversion by Alton Yankees. The breakdown, the rucks were very solid from the Springboks, as you kind of come to expect. Lineouts, we didn't miss a single lineout. That was pretty important. Scrums, we lost one in theory, but I mean, I think pretty much every single scrum we had, we, we won penalties. Um, Wales conceded 15 penalties overall. We conceded um, 14. I had a card apiece. I actually didn't mind the other cards because Oxen Chair was sent off not for the infringement itself, but for a buildup of infringements. And a few minutes later, uh, Reese Care was done the same thing. He said, "Listen, there's been a couple of penalties. You're going to the bin. It's not because of your the, your specific transgression. It's just been a buildup, and as a result, you have to go to the bin, which is fine. I don't think we need to talk about the ref much, to be honest. I think that it's, it gets far too easy to talk about. I think overall, a couple of decisions, probably both ways, which you would always debate about. Generally, I think that the result reflected the game. It was very, very close down to the last minute. But I do think that second half in the spring box was strong enough to earn them a deserved um, victory. Please do smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Steven. Thank you very much for watching and I'll chat to you soon.